You may have recently heard about Ford manufacturing respirators and Lamborghini churning out masks to fight COVID-19. But car companies have been making products other than cars for a long time. From the Aston Martin condo to Bugatti's hookah to a mechanical freaking heart made by General Motors. And why does Volkswagen make sausages? Stick around to the end and see the most insane products that car manufacturers have made and find out what sort of crazy collaborations we can expect to see next. This is Wheelhouse, baby. Hey everyone, today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped.com. We all know what it's like, right? One moment you're mowing the grass, getting it ready for a big night. The next thing you know, you hit a stick. Ah! The pain, the embarrassment, the shame. Well, worry no more because Manscaped has created the world's first all-in-one manscaping kit that makes manscaping safe and easy. I'm excited to be one of the first in the world to receive the new Lawnmower 3.0 water resistant body hair trimmer. The only trimmer on the market made with advanced skin safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts from manscaping accidents. I genuinely cannot stop talking about the new Lawnmower 3.0. Everyone in the office is tired of me talking about it in our group chat when I should be working. But you know what? I'm just happy that I'm able to do shower trims thanks to the water resistance, okay? I'm happy about it. So keep your lawn trimmed and in shape. Get 20% off and free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use promo code DONUT20 at manscaped.com. My balls thank me and yours will too. I actually really love Manscaped. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. I really, I think it's a great product and I think you guys should treat yourself. Treat your balls. Probably the most common alt car products we see are collaborations, where the car maker contributes research, design, and brand recognition, while an outside party actually makes the product. Like the high-tech M piano from Porsche and Alpha Piano. The M in M piano stands for mechatronic, like the mechatronic units found in many car gearboxes, especially in Volkswagens, Audis, and Porsche. In the M piano, mechatronic refers to the actuator underneath each key that allow you to manipulate the pitch and resistance through an external app. This isn't even the first piano Porsche has been involved with. They also teamed up with Borschendorfer, <laughs> I tried, an almost 200 year old piano maker to make a nearly $300,000 grand piano. Okay, sure, that's impressive, but can it play Runaway? Ferrari made the jump from car to lifestyle when they partnered with Cobra and Puma Golf and released a luxury golf line. They busted out all those corporate luxury buzzwords like handcrafted elegance and sophisticated functionality and fugly ass shoes. But the shoes aren't the star of the line here. That would have to be the bright red $2,000 driver made of carbon fiber composite, titanium alloy, and perfectly balanced with internal tungsten weights. You can cart this club around in your $2,400 golf bag made of the same Poltrona Frau leather you'll find in the Ferrari FF, one of my favorite shooting brakes. The leather is known for its supple, spicy aroma and is described as having a particularly Italian sensuality. Mamma mia, I want to f my golf bag. Collabs are one thing, but a lot of car companies actually make their own non-car products instead of using outside manufacturers. A perfect example of this is Nissan, who has wowed us with not one, but two autonomous office chairs. They first started with the intelligent parking chair, an office chair that returns to its original position with a simple clap. Then came the Pro Pilot chair, which does more than just park itself. It self-drives with you in it by detecting its relation to the seats around it. Now, before you get too excited, neither of these chairs are available to buy. They were developed as a marketing ploy to show off Nissan's new self-parking and self-driving technologies. Not cool, Nissan. You've probably heard about the Powerwall that Tesla has been manufacturing, a rechargeable lithium-ion home battery system that stores solar or grid energy for on-demand use. It's not the first of its kind, but it is probably the sleekest one out there. Elon Musk has touted the Powerwall when used with solar panels as a way to become totally independent of big grid energy. But even their 3,500 10 kilowatt hours option isn't really enough to power your home unless you're way off the grid like Shrek status and if you're living that Shrek life you probably can't afford the solar panels and power inverter you'd need to make it all work anyways for the city living far quads of the world like you and me the power wall would be great as a backup supply for outages or a way to cut costs then again Musk also named his kid uh, whatever this is so I don't know 
Okay, we have to talk about these Volkswagen sausages. Since 1973, Volkswagen has been manufacturing currywurst at the same plant in Wolfsburg where they make a bunch of their cars, like the Golf and the Tiguan. The sausage is even considered a Volkswagen original part. I'm not bullsh** you with its own part number, 199-398-500A. VW originally started producing sausages to feed the workers at the various canteens within the factory, and they still do. But once the outside world found out that their curry worst was the curry best, VW started selling them at supermarkets and football stadiums. They even give them away as freebies to Volkswagen customers. But this isn't just a cute side hustle, okay? For many years now, Volkswagen has produced more sausages than cars. We're talking 20,000 pork tubes a day. In 2018, they made 6.81 million of them. VW even introduced a vegetarian option in 2010. But unfortunately, Americans, we can't get our mitts on these things because of import restrictions on uncooked meat. I just hope they don't taste like crayons. It's a Volkswagen joke. A lot of car companies were making other products before they even got around to making cars. Case in point, Toyota, which actually began in the automatic loom business. And it wasn't even Toyota, it was Toyoda. In 1924, Sakichi Toyoda invented the Toyota Model G automatic loom. It was innovative because it used the principle of judoka, which meant that if the machine detected a problem, like a broken thread, it would stop itself so the problem could be corrected rather than doing a quality check at the end and finding out that you have a bunk product. This system is also known as autonomation or intelligent automation and is used in Toyota's car production to this day. The loom's nifty ability to detect issues mid-process was a gamay shanje in the loom business as it cut way down on wasted resources and overproduction. Obviously, loom heads at the time were like, gimme, 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 and Toyota sold the patent in 1929 to the British machinery company Plot Brothers, which gave him the capital to start up his automotive business with his son, Kichiro Toyota. They eventually changed the D to a T because people thought Toyota sounded better, but more importantly, because changing it to a T meant the name could be written with exactly eight strokes in Japanese lettering. Eight is a lucky number in Japan, and they thought it would welcome in good fortune and prosperity, which is the same reason I eat eight pizza rolls every day. Eight times three pizza rolls every day. Okay, so Toyota made cars, blah, blah, blah. We don't care about that right now. We care about the fact that in 2009, they also made a brain machine interface, allowing wheelchair users to control movements of an electric wheelchair with their freaking mind. Professor X style, an electrode covered helmet measured brain waves and picks up when the user is concentrating on a type of physical movement and translates that activity into steering instructions for the motorized wheelchair. How cool is this, guys? How did this happen in 2009 and I'm just now hearing about it. Look, I tried to find an update on the current technology and I weirdly couldn't find anything from the last decade. That's fine, right? Probably nothing to worry about, right? When a multinational corporation developing mind control technology then just goes full ghost mode on it. I'm not worried. Toyota has developed a ton of cool stuff, including a line of humanoid robots that we'll get into later. But did you know that Toyota also manufactures prefabbed houses? That's right, like hundreds of thousands of them. And they've been doing it since 1975, which means they were cranking out homes before they were even making Camrys. We just don't hear about it much here in the US because the residential production is pretty much limited to Japan. There are a bunch of different models and price points, and honestly, for a house that you can order out of a catalog, these things are pretty sick. Plus, where conventional construction can kind of drag on, these puppies can be assembled in about two months from start to finish. That's pretty amazing. For something a little more high-end, you have Aston Martin's 66-story downtown Miami luxury condo tower, which they literally call a car made into a skyscraper. It's a little much. Aston Martin is handling the interior design and corporate branding, but they partnered with outside developers to actually construct the dang thing. Living in the Aston Martin condo comes with some extremely bougie perks like a super yacht marina, multiple movie theaters, and virtual golf. The most expensive unit is a 19,000 square foot triplex penthouse that'll run you a cool $50 million. But the sickest part of that unit is that it comes with an Aston Martin Vulcan makes 820 buff horses, and it's the last of a run of only 24 cars valued around $3 million. So when you think about that, the, uh, the apartment's only $47 million. So worth it. Such a good use of money. 
BMW, Jaguar, Lamborghini, all of these car companies didn't even start in cars. Before Jaguar was making slick, speed-punching E-types, they were in the business of manufacturing motorcycle sidecars. Mitsubishi started in shipbuilding. Saab started in aircraft. Even Peugeot, the world's second oldest automaker behind Mercedes-Benz, didn't start in cars. Peugeot started in the early 1800s as a steel foundry that made things like coffee grinders, umbrella frames, and band saws. They still make salt and pepper mills to this day. My mom actually has a Peugeot spice grinder Grinder. Pretty sick. Put some nutmeg in there and put it on your whatever. The iconic lion you see on their badge actually first showed up on their saw blades. Armand Peugeot added it to symbolize the toughness of the saw's teeth, the strength of steel, and the speed of the cut like a bounding lion. Dude, it's, it's just a saw, man. It's not just a saw, it's a Peugeot saw. One of the wildest entries into the car world came from Ferruccio Lamborghini, who only got into cars to spite Enzo Ferrari. And if you haven't heard this story before, allow me. Lamborghini was a mechanical whiz who, after serving in World War II, started a company that built tractors out of surplus military vehicles. His business took off, and by the 1960s, he was manufacturing oil-burning heaters and air conditioners, too. With all of his hard-earned cabbage, Lambo bought himself a bunch of sports cars, one of them being the Ferrari 250 GT with a V12 engine. But he kept having issues with the clutch, to the point that he brought the complaint to Enzo Ferrari himself. Ferrari felt insulted. He got all aggro and was like, the problem's not with the car, it's with the drive window. Go play with your little tractors, okay? And Lamborghini was like, hell no, dude. I'm going to make my own sports car and hire your ex-employees to help me do it. And then everyone was like, damn, son. And then Lamborghini did it. He founded an auto factory. He built a V12 engine. He dropped it into his Lamborghini 350 GT and watched it rip to 158 miles per hour in Ferrari's face. It's amazing to think that if Ferrari had just known how to take some constructive criticism, he never would have gotten the Aventador SVJ. It's a pretty wild story. And if you want to know more, check out the up to speed on Lamborghini. Lamborghini. It's an oldie, but a goodie. Everyone knows that the white and blue on the BMW badge is a propeller in the sky, right? But did you know that the three points on Mercedes-Benz's logo represents the mobility on land, sea, and sky? Land is pretty obvious. You've got everything from your 1950s Goldwing Coupe to today's C-Class. On the open ocean, you have the 46-foot luxury motor yacht that Mercedes developed with Silver Arrows Marine. The Aero 460 Gran Turismo was released in 2017. It fits up to 10 people and has a max speed of 44 miles an hour. But this yacht isn't just a boat made by a car company. Look at this thing. Look at those automotive proportions. It really does look like a car in the water. It's just a tad more expensive at $1.7 million. Okay, so land, check. Sea, check. Sky? Look no further than the Mercedes EC145 twin-engine turbine-powered luxury helicopter. Mercedes didn't manufacture this aircraft. A company called Eurocopter did. But they did design the interior, modeling it after their luxury class cars. This Sky Whip will run you a horrific $8.5 million. War! What is it good for? Having car companies manufacture military vehicles, that's what. Chrysler, GM, Fiat, Subaru, BMW, Volkswagen, Dodge, they all lent their manufacturing skills to the war effort. It's super interesting. I actually can't get into it now or else this will be a two hour long wheelhouse. But if you want to learn more about the tanks and bombers made by your favorite car brands, let me know in the comments and we'll see what we can do making a video about it. Making a military grade destroyer is one thing. Car manufacturers sending their cars to space like Tesla did with their Roadster takes a whole other level of engineering. But did you know that Tesla wasn't the first car manufacturer to go into space? Ford, Chrysler, and GM all played a big part in NASA's early Apollo missions. After Ford acquired the battery, radio, and TV company Philco, the newly branded Philco Ford built NASA's Mission Control Center in Houston, implementing new technology that allowed for way more sophisticated communication between the astronauts in space and their counterparts here on Earth. Chrysler built the first stage of the Saturn 1B rocket booster that helped us blast to the moon. And in 1971, GM and Boeing teamed up to make the Lunar Rover, churning out an electric vehicle long before the Chevy Volt or Chevy Bolt. Their creation was such a success that NASA used similar models for the Apollo 16 and 17 missions, and all three of these GM rovers remain on the moon to this day. Talk about dude where's my car, right? 
Love that movie. Some car collabs are just downright weird, like the Mustang Cologne by Estee Lauder that my friend Cody used to wear in high school. Love you, Cody. <laughs> but there's also Isaac Mizrahi's Chevy Malibu inspired women's fashion collection, which I can only describe as going to a meeting at the beach. This lavish lady can get her tootsies on some $110 driving moccasins or perchance a $260 tote bag. Who bought this? If your mom did, <laughs> tell her to hit me up. Perhaps the most egregious of these collabs is the Bugatti Hookah, created alongside luxury shisha pipe maker Desval. Now, Bugatti isn't the first car company to put out these Middle Eastern style pipes. The Porsche Design Shisha came out in 2011 for $1,950. Then two years later, Bugatti was like, oh dude, sick, we could do that too. Except we're gonna jack up the price by literally five thousand percent that's right bugatti's hookah costs one hundred thousand dollars it's insane if anyone tries to convince you that a pipe is worth a hundred grand they're blowing smoke up your ass am i right <laughs> now let's talk about beeps i'm not talking honks i'm talking about beep beep boop bop beep because it's robot time who remembers in 05 when Toyota debuted an entire series of humanoid partner robots that were in a band that's slap <laughs> Toyota is truly out here with human support robots, a basketball robot, and a whole line of assistant robots that were set to debut at the 2020 Olympics and Paralympics. I guess we'll have to wait till next year for those things. In 2013, Toyota helped develop Japan's first robot astronaut and first ever companion robot in space called Kirobo. Kirobo is a high functioning mini robot with a range of capabilities. It's got facial voice and speech recognition, speech synthesis, and video recording. Sounds like everything an iPhone can do, right? Wrong, because Kirobo is specially designed to navigate zero gravity environments and assist Commander Wakata, the first Japanese commander of the International Space Station. He helps with all these different experiments, all while being cute as hell. I actually don't think I've seen a cuter robot. Oh my God, there's a mini Kirobo? Toyota is not the only car maker toying around with robots. Honda bopped on over to the beep bop zone way back in 86 when their R&D robotics team set out to develop a robot that can move and walk around like a human. They went through the E-Series, P-Series, and 11 iterations later arrived at ASIMO, which stands for Advanced Step in Innovative Mobility. ASIMO made its US debut in 2002 as it rang the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange and made history as the world's only humanoid robot that can go up and downstairs independently. Now obviously the Boston Dynamics robots have completely eclipsed ASIMO, but it was pretty awesome at the time. In 2010, Honda was able to apply the same sort of mind control technology from the Toyota wheelchair to ASIMO, thereby allowing a user to think of a limited number of gestures and ASIMO will do it for them. They'll just freaking do it. Since then, ASIMO has learned sign language, mixed drinks, and even conducted orchestras. It's awesome to see automakers use their power for good, especially now at a time when we really have to take care of each other. I'm talking Ford and Peugeot, who are manufacturing respirators to fight COVID-19. Lamborghini, they're manufacturing masks and shields. Volkswagen, who teamed up with fabric company Farisha, Farisha? Farisha, to make medical gowns. GM is helping produce 10,000 ventilators and one and a half million masks every month. But this venture into medical equipment is nothing new for them. In 1952, GM worked with Dr. Forrest Dodrill to create the first ever mechanical heart, which made open heart surgery on humans possible. That's a really huge deal. So many people owe their lives to this 12 cylinder engine looking device and the foundation it laid for advancements in heart surgery. It's so cool. So what's next? What insane, technologically advanced, generally unnecessary car collab is on the horizon? Porsche and Boeing are teaming up to explore the world of autonomous electric luxury aircraft with vertical takeoff and landing capabilities, kind of like a quadcopter for humans. But even a flying car feels like small potatoes compared to Toyota's woven city. That's right. Toyota is creating an entire city. They're building it on a 175 acre plot that used to be the site of a Toyota factory at the base of Mount Fuji. The high-tech metropolis will be powered by hydrogen fuel cells and function as a living laboratory for Toyota engineers to implement and study various technologies, including autonomy, robotics, smart homes, and personal mobility. That's just insane. 
Let me know which of these products you wish you had and which ones you wish did not exist. Thank you for watching this episode. It means a lot to me. A lot of work goes into these things. This is actually the second time I had to film this because uh, I messed up the first time. Very aggravating, but a lot of editors spent a lot of time making these videos really good. And uh, it would just mean a lot for us for you to drop a like at the very least and maybe consider subscribing to our channel. And we really love doing it for you guys. Thank you for watching. Be kind. I'll see you next time.